Welcome to this AQA GCSE Sociology Revision Blast. Today we're focusing on research methods that you can see in both of your papers. We're going to start off with a round of missing vowels. So with this activity, you have some key terms that are popping up on the screen. All of their vowels have been taken out. You just need to work out what they are. Okay, let's reveal the first one. It is questionnaires. Let's have a look at our second one. Okay, so again, remember these are all linked to research methods. What is this key term? Probably a little bit more tricky than the last one. Let's reveal. It is reliability. So how trustworthy are the results that you have achieved? Okay, this one is a little bit easier because it has a few vowels. This is a type of research method. Let's have a look. It is interviews, so these can be structured, semi-structured or unstructured. We've got number four. Okay, let's reveal. It is validity, so how useful is the data that you have collected or the results that you have gained? And we have this one here, which is missing a lot of letters. This is our last one. This is, let's reveal, it is observation. So you can have covert or overt observation. So overt is when um, people know that you are, they are being watched. Covert is in secret. You can have participant when you are joining in and non-participant also. Our next activity is a connection wall. On the screen, you have got 16 phrases that can be divided up into four groups. Again, obviously these are all to do with research methods because that's the focus of this session. What we would like you to do to start with is to look at the four that are to do with representativeness. So which ones are to do with the idea of representativeness? Please pause the video to give yourself some time. So you might want a pen or a pencil here to note down which ones that you think are correct. So we're looking for representativeness. If you haven't paused the video, please do. Okay, do you think you've managed to find the, find the right four? Let's reveal the answer. So we've got the target population. Is the sample typical of the target population? The sampling method? and do the results overgeneralize the issue. So they are all linked to representativeness. Right, the ones that we would like you to look for now are to do with validity. So how truthful or useful is the research that you have done? Again, pause the video to give yourself some time to try and identify the four that are linked to validity. Once you're ready, restart and we will show you the answers. Okay, let's reveal the answers for validity. Have the respondents been honest? How near to the truth is the study outcome? Is there a trust rapport? If there's a trust rapport, then your uh, respondents are likely to be more honest. And observation means that subjects are seen in their natural environment. Therefore, it makes it more valid. Right, we now want to look for um, reliability. So which four out of the remaining eight are all linked to the reliability? So how trustworthy is your data? Again, pause the video to try and work out the four that are correct for reliability. When you're ready, unpause and we will reveal the answer. Okay, let's reveal. It is, if the study was repeated over and over again, would the outcome be the same? Is there a standard set of questions? Are the questions being interpreted in the same way? And would another researcher get the same result? So these are all linked to reliability. Okay, now we have four left. We've got our participants guaranteed an anonymity throughout. Has the researcher protected the participants from harm? Has the researcher followed a moral code of conduct? Have the participants given informed consent? So what we'd like you to do this time is to try and work out what links the four remaining boxes. So again, take a moment if you need to. If you need to pause the video, please do. So what links these four remaining boxes? Let's reveal. 
It is, of course, ethics. So well done if you got that correct. Right, let's move on to a 60 second challenge. You've got 60 seconds to match the sociologist to the research method that they used. Match the letters on the left with the numbers on the right. Okay, let's see how you got on. So we've got A for Paul Willis, case study in one school. That was his lad study. B, Wilmot and Young did the social survey to look at the uh, concept of conjugal roles. C is Anne Oakley using unstructured interviews, five there. D2 is Stephen Ball using participant observation, so looking at the effects of setting in schools. E was, uh, so E goes with one for Fiona Devine and semi-structured interviews, so she was looking at the affluent worker study. And then F6 is Ball Bowl and Gertwiz, who did a case study in several schools. We're going to move on. We've got a question grid this time. We want to think about whether these are quantitative or qualitative data. So we're going to look at each one. We've got six here. You've got to just decide, are they quantitative or qualitative data? So we'll do number one first using school prospectuses and marketing material to see how often images of women are shown in stereotypically male jobs. Is this quantitative data or qualitative data? So quantitative is numerical, qualitative is in word form. Let's have a look. It is, of course, quantitative because obviously you're sort of counting something there, aren't you? Using historical diaries to interpret attitudes towards social class and speech in the 1970s. Is it quantitative or qualitative? Let's reveal, it is qualitative. Sending 4,000 questionnaires to individuals to find out about their attitudes towards attending university. Quantitative or qualitative? Let's reveal, it is quantitative. Lengthy semi-structured interviews to explore women's experiences of domestic violence. Quantitative or qualitative? Okay, let's reveal. Good, it's qualitative. Secretly joining a gang so you can observe their behaviours and attitudes. Let's reveal. It is qualitative. And carrying out a laboratory experiment to gauge the effects of authority on individual citizens. Is this qualitative or quantitative data? It is quantitative data. Right. Let's do a red herring. So you just have to work out in this activity which of the four items is the odd one out and why. So we have financial cost, covert versus overt, participation versus non-participation and issues around personal safety. Which of those is the odd one out and why? Let's reveal the answer. It is financial cost. So the others are which are important considerations for observation. Right, number two. Elton Mayo, time consuming, Chicago factory workers and observation changes behaviour. Which of those is the odd one out and why? Let's reveal. It is time consuming because the others are linked to the Hawthorne effect, the idea of an observation changing how people um, behave, which was first noticed during Elton May's study of Chicago factory workers. Number three, we've got Pete Townsend, Hazy Heath and Ridge, Paul Willis and Anne Oakley. Which one is the odd one out and why? Right, let's reveal. It is Willis because the other ones used questionnaires to complete their research. 
whereas he used observation. Number four, Charles Murray, the Rappaport, Ball, Bow and Gertwitz, or Fiona Devine. Who's the odd one out and why? Let's reveal, it is Charles Murray, so the other people use interviews to complete their research. Number five, we've got James Patrick, Sylvia Walby, Stephen Ball, or Pat Carlin. Which is the odd one out and why? So just leave those up for a moment. Who's the odd one out? Let's have a look. So the other sociologists here used observation to complete their research. Okay, we're going to move on to the categorised activity. You have got 60 seconds to separate the key phrases into these two categories. They are either pros of questionnaires or they are cons of questionnaires. Off you go. see how you got on. So in terms of our uh, advantages we've got they can allow a large sample size, the standardized questions is really important, they're usually anonymous, interviewer bias is reduced and they are relatively quickly and cheap to conduct particularly if you use an online survey and the disadvantages are they have a low response rate, questions can be interpreted differently so therefore they're not really useful and they're often filled in very quickly with not a lot of thought going into them. Well, I'm going to look at an on balance activity now. So we're thinking about the advantages and disadvantages for using interviews to conduct social research. So what we would like you to do firstly is think of two advantages of using interviews to conduct sociological research. So pause the video and note down two advantages. When you're ready, restart the video. Okay, if you haven't paused already, please do so because we are about to reveal the answers. So two advantages of using interviews to conduct sociological research include offering the flexibility to change direction and add extra question if something interesting comes up and it allows in-depth and more thoughtful answers. You could also have the idea that interviews allow that sort of build up of trust in a relationship as well, which means that you are more likely to get um, more honest answers. OK, let's have a think about using interviews to conduct sociological research in terms of the disadvantages. So why might they be problematic? So again, this time we want you to pause the video and think about the disadvantages. And when you're ready, unpause and we'll have a look at what you could have written. So two disadvantages. If you haven't paused already, please do so because we are about to reveal the answers. So you get interviewer bias. So the respondents may answer differently depending on who is conducting the interview. Also, time commitment is a really big issue here. It takes a long time to build up trust rapport needs to make respondents feel comfortable. And it also takes a long time to actually physically do the interview in the first place. OK, we're going to move on to a give me three. You have 30 seconds to give me three benefits of using observation for sociological research. Off you go.
Okay, let's have a look. So they offer high validity, it observes behaviour in a natural setting, and they're in depth. So they offer really good insight into the issue that's being researched. Let's do one more. So this time we're looking at criticisms of using observation for sociological research. 30 seconds starts now. Okay, let's have a look at what you could have noted down. The Hawthorne effect or that observer effect, where people change their behaviour because they're being watched. Practical issues, so the time taken, but also gatekeepers, so the idea of access to a group in the first place. And it's hard to produce quantifiable data. It's also down to the researcher's interpretation there. Right, I'm going to move on to some big reveals. We've got three of these. So you need to try and work out what the answer is before all the clues have been revealed. Number one, it has high validity. Two, respondents answer questions. Three, uses open questions. It's a method used by Carlin and Oakley. And number five, there is no interview schedule. So what type of research method are we talking about here? Okay, just have a quick look at those again. Let's reveal. It is unstructured interviews that work more like a conversation. Right, next one. Number one, has high reliability. Two, the respondents answer questions. Three, uses closed questions. Four, is a method used by Hazley, Heath and Ridge. And five, respondents can answer at their own leisure. So what are we talking about this time? Again, have a quick look at those again. Let's reveal. It is a self-completion questionnaire. Right, our last big reveal is this one. Number one, it produces quantitative data. Two, it can be easily replicated. Three, it's a list of standardised questions. Four, it was used by Wilmot and Young. Five, the researcher is present when responses are given. So what research method are we talking about here? Let's reveal. It is a structured interview. Well done if you got those right. Right, we've now got two 30 second challenges. So our first one is, what is the advantages of using secondary data in your research? Okay, let's just remind ourselves that secondary data is data that has been collected by somebody else for a different purpose. So it can provide that historical data which is not available in the present, it's cheaper and less time consuming than carrying out your own research, and it backs up your finding and increases the validity of your uh, study. But there are lots of drawbacks of using secondary data in your research, so 30 seconds to think of what they might be. Okay, what did you come up with for this one? So they may be quite time consuming to trawl through and it can be overwhelming due to the scale. So for example, trawling through the census data, it may be out of date. So again, if we talk about census data, it is collected every 10 years. It was released 
earlier uh, this year. Actually, maybe at the start, maybe at the end of last year. But that was the 2021 census. But up until then, we'd been relying on the census data from um, 10, 11 years ago. And it may also be down to interpretation as the author may not be alive or available to interpret. So, for example, if you're using diaries. OK, we're going to move on to some multiple choice questions. We've got eight of these. So number one is which of the following is not a practical consideration for researchers? A, travel implications. B, time taken. C, financial costs. D, anonymity. So which of those is not a practical consideration for researchers? At any point, if you need to pause for a bit more time, please do. Right, let's reveal. It is anonymity. OK, this is more of an ethical consideration. Number two. Which of the following is not an ethical consideration for researchers? A, informed consent. B, the avoidance of harm. C, confidentiality. D, sample size. So which is not an ethical consideration for your researchers? OK, let's reveal. It is sample size. So informed consent there is really important. The idea of consent is all about saying yes to something, but informed consent means that you know exactly what you are agreeing to. Three. Which of the following is not an issue affecting validity? Is it A, cost of access to data, B, bias, C, the Hawthorne effect, or D, social desirability? Okay, let's reveal. It is the cost of access to data. Number four, which research method is least at risk of asking leading questions? A, interview, B, observation, C, questionnaire, or D, survey? Let's reveal. It is an observation. Simply because observations don't include questions. Number five. Which of the following is not a primary source of data? A. Participant observation. B. Official statistics. C. Group interview. Or D. Pre-coded questionnaire. So which is not a primary source of data? OK, let's reveal. It is official statistics. They have been uh, collected by someone else, so therefore they are secondary. Six. Which of the following does not refer to the process of using more than one source of data? A. Mixed methods. B. Triangulation. C. Qualitative data. And D. Is methodological pluralism. Which one does not refer to the process of using more than one source of data? OK, let's reveal the answer. It is qualitative data. Number seven. What is the name of the sampling type which requires participants to recommend personal contacts? Is it A, systematic sampling, B, snowball sampling, C, quota sampling, or is it D, random sampling? So what's the name of the sampling type which requires participants to recommend personal contacts? Let's reveal the answer. It is snowball sampling. And our last MCQ is number eight. What is the name for the type of research study which follows the lives and experience of people over an extended period of time? Is it A, methodological pluralism? Is it B, triangulation? Is it C, longitudinal study? Or is it D, seven up strategy? So which is the name for the type of research study which follows the lives and experiences of people over an extended period of time. Let's reveal. It is a longitudinal study. Now, a really good example of it is the 7UP study, which has um, featured on TV every seven years that follows a group of people, the same people from their seventh birthdays to 14 to 21, etc. It looks at how their lives has changed. Right, the last activity for us on the Revision Blast today is a five, four, three, two, one. So you've got two minutes to answer these questions. We want five disadvantages of using observation in research. We want four advantages of using observation in research. We want three types of observations that have been carried out, two research studies that have used observation, and one theoretical approach that would favour the use of observation. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one.
Okay, let's see how we got on. So five disadvantages of using observations in research would be the Hawthorne effect, difficult to replicate, time taken to conduct them, small scale and access to participants. Four advantages of using observation in research would be higher validity, can observe the behaviour firsthand, can obtain greater understanding of individuals' experiences and produces qualitative data. Three, it's covert participants. Three types of observation that can be carried out would be covert participation, over non-participation and over participation. Two research studies that have used observations are Ball with his beach uh, side comprehensive observation and Willis learning to labour. And one theoretical approach that would favour the use of observations would be interactionists who are interested in the relationship between things. Okay, well done for getting to the end of the revision blast. We have covered lots of different research methods. And remember, you will see these across both of your papers. If you haven't already had a look at some of our other revision blasts, please see the playlist because we have got them in place for all of the different topics. If they're not there already, they will be in the next week or so. And obviously, the last thing to wish you is heaps of luck for those two exams.